So at this time, I am introducing graphing to you on the rectangular coordinate system. In the last video, I introduced all the vocabulary that you might need to know to graph ordered pairs. And in this video, that's basically what we're doing, is we're going to practice plotting points or plotting ordered pairs. Now, I want you to do what we did in the last example, is plot these points and then label what quadrant or what intercepts they are. I'll do the first one just to show you um, how I want you to do this, and then hopefully you can pause the video and you can finish it from there. So my first point, labeled as A, is for negative 2. So I count right four units and I count down two units, which gives me this point here. And make sure you label each of these points. You can see that it is in the bottom right quadrant, so I would label this one as being in quadrant four, or quadrant IV. So all you need to do is plot your points and then figure out what quadrant they're in or whether they are an X and a Y intercept. So at this time, pause the video and see if you can finish these examples on your own. Okay, so I'm going to work through most of these very quickly. Um, point B is negative 2, 0, so that's left 2 units. You do not count up or down any, so that's where point B is. I can see that it intercepts my x-axis, so that one is called an x-intercept. Point C is left 3 units and then up 5 units, so point C would be up here. I can see that's in the top left quadrant, so that would be in quadrant 2. Point D is I do not count left or right any, but I count up 3 units, so point D would be right here, and that is intersecting the y-axis, so I call that a y-intercept. Point E is left 4 units, down 3 units, so that is down here. So I can see that's the bottom left quadrant, so that is in quadrant 3, or quadrant III. So A through E are really easy because those are just typical order pairs. Now F, G, and H are a little bit more complicated because they're not whole numbers, but not that big a deal. We can always convert them to fractions or decimals if need be and go from there. So F is right. 2.5 or 2.5 units, and then up 3.75 units. So I go right 2.5 units, which is about here, and then I go up 3.75 units, so 3, 3 quarters of a unit. So where those two match is about right here. So the purpose of F, G, and H is just to emphasize that not all numbers that we deal with and not all ordered pairs or points that we deal with will always land exactly on whole numbers or the tick marks that I have already graphed out for you. And I can see that F is in my top right quadrant, so that one itself is in quadrant one. Okay, G. G, I can see that I have fractions, which should be no big deal. So my first direction is I want to count right two-thirds units. So not all the way up into one, but if I split that into three equal units, I would, of course, go with the second one or two-thirds of the way up to one. My second direction here, negative 15 over 4. That might be hard to analyze as the way it's written, so I can convert it into one of two ways. I can convert it to a mixed fraction, or I can convert it into a decimal. So let me first convert it to a mixed fraction. 4 goes into 15 evenly three times. And if I take out those three times of 4, meaning taking out 12, I see that I have three of them left over. So negative 15 over 4 converted to a mixed fraction is negative 3 and 3 fourths units. So to plot point G, I would count right two-thirds and down three and three-fourths units, which would put me about right here. I can see that's in the bottom right quadrant, so of course that puts me in quadrant four. 
Now, I said that you could do this one of two ways. The first way is by converting it into a mixed fraction, which I did. Or the second way is I can figure out the decimal approximation that goes with this. And the easiest way to do that is just to type that in to your calculator. So that's what I'm going to do. So I have my electronic version of this calculator here, and I'm just going to type it in exactly like it started, as negative 15 divided by 4. And when I do that, that gives me negative 3.75. So I can see that the decimal approximation for negative 15 over 4 is approximately negative 3.75, or what I said before, down 3 and 3 quarters of a unit. Part H is definitely the most difficult example, and that's why I obviously put it at the very last one. This one is definitely going to be the easiest to figure out the decimal approximation that goes with these because there is no fraction format. So we just have to figure out the decimals. And again, to do that, I'm just going to type it in my calculator. I'm going to do the second one first because that's the easier one to type into my calculator. So square root of 5, I need to find the square root symbol, and that is here above the x squared. So to get my blue square root symbol, I would push my blue second button. So second square root, type in 5. If you have an older version of the calculator, it will put parentheses around it. So close your parentheses by pushing the parentheses button above 9. If you have the newer version, like you see here, to get out of your square root, it says push the right arrow. That's what this indicates. So I push my right arrow. And then I can just hit Enter, and that gives me my decimal approximation, 2.236. And it goes farther, but of course, that's going to be good enough to give me a decent graph of this. So my square root of 5 is 2.236. And then the cube root of negative 25. So the cube root, not as visible as the square root is, it's actually under the math button. So if you push the math button, you can see option four is a cube root. So I'm going to scroll down to four and push enter, or I can just select option four. That pulls up the cube root. Again, if it's an older version of the calculator, it'll have parentheses. If it's a newer one like this, I can just type in negative 25 and push the over button. Then to figure out the actual decimal approximation, I'm going to push enter, and that gives me this here, negative 2.924. So negative 2.924. So my approximate of H is this here. So to graph this, I'm going to go left 2.9 units, almost all the way to 3. And then I'm going to go up 2.2 units, so something like 2 and a quarter close to there. So here gives me approximately where H is. I can see that's in the top left quadrant, so that leaves me with quadrant 2. So now you see examples of how to plot ordered pairs, whether they just be typical whole numbers or any other complicated numbers like we saw, decimals, fractions, or even roots. So this is where this video will end.